Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this afternoon's session to talk about the Bell Foundation and how we can support our EAL learners within our context. Uh, we're joined by Caroline Bruce from Bell Foundation, who will talk you through some of the information uh, and some of the sort of things that we've been looking at over the sort of past 12 months and how we're going to work with schools over the coming years to support our EAL learners. We all know that this is something that's becoming a more pressing issue um, when we look at the sort of global politics, but equally when we consider just simply the needs of our ever-changing communities. So we're going to spend a little bit of time just hearing about the Bell Foundation, what they do, how they work with us, uh, and then I'll give you a little bit of information about how you can work with us and what access to support is available to yourselves. And as I say, we'll uh, pick up any questions that we've got towards the tail end of the session. So without much further hold up, Carolina, over to you. Okay. Hello, and welcome to this short presentation about the new partnership between Chiltern Teaching School Hub and the Bell Foundation. The Bell Foundation is a charity which works to overcome disadvantage through language education. And while we have different strands, our main focus is our EAL programme, which is largely directed at schools and at organisations that work with schools, with learners and with their families. Most of the direct work we do with schools is through our Language for Results programme. Language for Results is a long term not for profit programme designed by the Bell Foundation to support schools in embedding sustainable EAL provision and developing inclusive practices. The programme seeks to improve the attainment of children who speak English as an additional language by developing the knowledge, skills and confidence of school staff at all stages of their career in education and by supporting the school to develop an inclusive learning environment in which multilingualism is embraced as an asset. Much of Language for Results is available as part of our national programme. On our website, you can find a range of evidence-informed, freely available resources to support schools in their provision for learners who use EAL. As well as the research we fund, you'll find guidance pieces, teaching resources to use in the classroom, and the Bell Foundation's award-winning assessment framework. Additionally, from our website, you can see our programme of freely available webinars, providing the latest research, guidance and support for busy teachers. We also run heavily subsidised open access online courses. And again, the details are available from the Bell Foundation's website. However, we know that a local offer that takes into account the local context and expertise is by far more impactful. And so we've developed a regional offer which can add a bespoke element to the language for results offer available through centres of expertise. In terms of who delivers this training, each centre of expertise has its own team of Bell Foundation licensed practitioners. BFLPs, all of whom work in education locally, whether as teachers, senior leaders, teacher trainers or advisors. All of the BFLPs are highly experienced in the field of EAL and have been fully trained and licensed by the Bell Foundation to run Language for Results. Chilton's team of BFLPs spans primary and secondary phases and as well as teachers and classroom practitioners also includes teacher trainers. The BFLPs hold either a silver or a gold licence. Gold licence BFLPs are licensed to run the more strategic courses aimed at leadership teams. So if we look now at Chilton's offer, there are essentially two routes into Chilton's offer. The first is aimed at schools themselves, schools that are looking to develop their own provision. And the second is aimed at individuals who might be interested in developing their own expertise. A whole school offer might begin with an audit of the school's current provision. Equally, though, a school might have a really clear idea of their development needs, potentially in response to a change in cohorts, and might simply request training and support around a specific area, for example, in welcoming newly arrived students who are new to English or in leading a whole school strategy on EAL. The training is likely to be in the school itself and of course has the benefit of allowing the trainer to get to know the school and understand their specific context. 
The open access course is more suited to individual practitioners, perhaps where a school wants to train one or two members of staff. There will be a programme of online courses aimed at different groups of practitioners, for example, teaching assistants, EAL coordinators and classroom teachers. You might want to know a bit more about what the courses look like. The Language for Results courses have been designed to meet the CPD needs of the whole staff, from senior leaders through to non-teaching staff. The courses are evidence informed, they draw on current data and research, and they offer practical strategies for the classroom. There are different versions of the courses available where appropriate, for example, Key Stage 1 or 2 and Secondary. OK, so let's look at a few examples of courses and how they're targeted at different types of staff. One session that's designed for every single member of frontline staff to attend is Comprehensible English for New Arrivals using EAL. This session is relevant for, for everyone because they, everyone needs to be able to communicate clearly with learners who use EAL, particularly those who are new to English. It's, it's relevant for everyone from school reception staff to the canteen staff to members of senior leadership. It's a very, very popular course and it's a quick win for immediate impact. It focuses on one of the key transferable skills across the whole school, crucial to both pupil achievement and parental engagement. And, and one of the great things about this course is that it requires little staff planning or preparation time. Another example of a course that's relevant to many members of staff is how to adapt teaching for learners who use EAL. We've also developed a suite of courses about assessing the language proficiency of learners using EAL. From an introduction to the Bell Foundation assessment framework and the practicalities around using it to assess proficiency English, to a more strategic session for senior leaders and middle leaders who are looking at how to embed good assessment practices in their own school. When we work with senior leaders, the sessions usually much more strategic, supporting them to understand the current context in terms of policy so that they can then effectively support the rest of the staff. We also have a course aimed solely at those leading on EAL, um, so EAL coordinators and so forth. And this provides an in-depth and practical exploration of the elements involved in the role. Both of those courses are developed by our Bell Foundation licensed practitioners who hold a gold license. When it comes to, for example, EAL coordinators, teachers and TAs, the focus is very practical. For instance, there's a course designed specifically for teaching assistants. Another set of courses we've developed for teaching staff is around the language used when teaching and learning. The first in that suite are, aims to help teachers feel more confident in their understanding of the language and grammar, which might prove challenging for some learners and how they might make good use of this knowledge in their teaching. Whereas the second focuses on the more practical aspects of integrating language learning alongside subject learning with the aim that learners can be supported to develop their knowledge and confidence in using language. BFLPs also have access to three modules designed to use as part of um, initial teacher training programmes, supporting schools and universities to prepare their trainees to work in culturally and linguistically diverse settings. We've considered how the courses are developed to suit different groups of practitioners. However, at the heart of language for results are the learners themselves. Inclusive policies and practices, embedded assessment procedures, accessible teaching strategies, increased teacher confidence, all of this results in learners who are in a strong position to access the curriculum in a more meaningful way in order to achieve their potential and at the same time develop their proficiency in English. We're going to move on now and consider why it's so important to consider EAL both in our teaching and when we're planning CPD for our school. So first, do you know how many learners in England 
are identified as using English as an additional language. If you answered C, you'd have been correct. 19.5% of our learners are identified as using EAL, and you can see that that's an increase since 19.3% last year. And that's almost one in five of our pupils. And in a little bit more detail, you can see here that um, the highest proportions of those learners are, are actually at the younger end, so in the in nurseries. And it obviously stands to reason then that those learners um, will follow through into primary and then secondary over the coming years. And that's not to say that all of those learners will require the same amount of support, but it's just it's an interesting insight into how the um, demographics of our schools are changing. Just a quick look at some of your local data. If you look in particular at that move from a uh, nursery, so you can see that um, where it's 29.1% of uh, children in nursery uh, nationally use English as an additional language. In Bedford, that's 32.6. Um, and in central beds 29.8 and in Luton 49.1 and those numbers will obviously um, feed through um, from nursery into primary and into secondary. So we know then that English as an additional language is a, is a really significant feature for, for virtually all of the schools in the area I'm sure. So this provides us then with our main reason for focusing on EAL. The numbers say that we need to, as more of our classrooms become increasingly multicultural and multilinguistic, the need to consider this group of learners is, is obvious. The second reason is that the 2010 Equality Act, along with the Public Sector Equality Act, require schools to respond to diversity by removing barriers, discrimination and forms of exclusion for marginalised groups and to ensure equitable learning and the fostering of good relations amongst all. Another reason is quite simply because we have to. The national curriculum emphasises the responsibility of subject teachers in mainstream schools to support the development of language. We also know from the teacher standards that teachers are expected to know about the needs of learners who use English as an additional language and also know how to use distinctive teaching approaches to support their learning. However, not all teachers have received training in how to work with learners who use English as an additional language. We know that ITT, for instance, is inconsistent when it comes to EAL. EAL can sometimes be lumped together generically with inclusion or SEND. The programme offered during ITT often depends on the expertise available at the individual school or university and as research has confirmed, the teacher educators themselves often lack that confidence and expertise to train student teachers to work in culturally and linguistically diverse settings. Another group reporting a lack of confidence in meeting the needs of learners using EAL is the newly qualified teachers. The most, most recent results from the NQT's annual survey published by the DfE in 2018 found that NQTs report that they feel less well prepared for EAL than for any other aspect of their work. This picture isn't likely to have changed in that time as funding for local specialist provision for training has all but disappeared in many parts of the country. The extraordinary disruption caused by the pandemic has adversely affected many learners, with learners using EAL having been particularly affected. 
because in addition to learning loss, they've also experienced language learning loss. We meet regularly with teachers from schools in different parts of the country, and they're telling us about the slower rates of, of, of catch up for some learners. Many pupils at the early stages of English language acquisition did not hear, speak or read much English during the various periods of home learning. And this limited exposure to English may account for their current difficulties comprehending what they're being asked to do and their reticence to participate in discussions. And as we see in the news with families arriving from Afghanistan, Hong Kong, Ukraine and elsewhere, many schools are finding that their cohorts are changing. Schools that had previously had few learners who were using English as an additional language are now welcoming children from Ukraine, for example. Funding is available for schools through the support package for the various resettlement schemes to provide, among other things, specialist teachers and English language support to assist with learning. We know that many within this group of learners may not have settled yet in that they, they may still be in temporary housing and this may result in children moving schools. And so the importance of quality training, reaching a broad audience rather than a pocket of experts becomes even more apparent so that whichever school a family attends, they will receive the support needed to access learning and school life. OK, so finally, I wanted to take us back to the learners themselves and the impact that quality teaching and provision might have on them now and in the future. The Education Policy Institute, the Bell Foundation and Unbound Philanthropy published a report by Joe Hutchinson in 2018, which analyses current policies and funding for learners who use EAL. And if you're interested in, in seeing this report, it is available on our website. Joe Hutchinson identified four key dimensions which make an impact on a learner's attainment. The most significant of those is the learner's level of English proficiency. Proficiency in English accounts for 22% of the variance in attainment for a child who uses English as an additional language. So you can see how a learner's opportunities will be open significantly if they have the, the educational opportunities that allow them to develop their proficiency in English and therefore learn and demonstrate their learning through English. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. For more information about Language for Results through Chilton Teaching School Hub, you can contact James Searle directly um, and you can also find more information about the offer um, through um, the Teaching School Hub's website. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you, Karen. I think um, you kind of hit the nail on the head with a number of points and a lot of our schools in the local area, so across Bedfordshire, parts of Hertfordshire and Milton Keynes are, are kind of experiencing the changing dynamics um, and are starting to see, as you've sort of seen with that census data, that actually our nurseries and primaries are starting to feel that tip where there is a greater need to support those EAL learners. And I think that that's probably something that we can all probably acknowledge and see in our own setting. So what I wanted to do is just kind of run through some of the points around how you can access training, what's available in terms of the support that we can offer. Uh, so keeping it fairly sort of light touch and generic is that obviously, I don't know, Caroline, if you're able to bring that last slide up just so that it's got email yeah. and so forth. Um, in terms of the training that we offer, as Caroline sort of mentioned earlier in the slides, it's around whole school strategic oversight so we can start to build together working with individual settings, a longer term intervention plan that will involve the school leadership, part of perhaps your school improvement plan. Um, looking right the way through to classroom teachers, TAs, and a, and a comprehensive support package, uh, working with expert BFLPs, right the way sort of down to a light touch single session. It might be a case if you just want to target and hone in on a small group of staff in the school and how they might be able to work with a particular group of individual students. And we can tailor whatever it, the support is that you need. It's simply a case, obviously, of just reaching out to myself. You've got uh, my email address on the screen. Our website address there as well so you can have a look at that equally having a look at the bell foundation website and what programs it is that are available uh, to help and support schools 
with their EL uh, training needs, but it is just a case of reaching out and then we can meet, have a discussion around what the support plan looks like for your schools, what training opportunities there are. And even if it's a case that it might be appropriate for us to train up a BFLP to run the EAL program within your own schools. So we have a range of programs. It might well be external support where one of our existing BFLPs comes and works with your school, or simply a case of us getting someone trained up within your ex existing setting and they're staying situated in your school, working with solely your school. A conversation um, for us to have as we move forward.